to Conversations. I'm Robin Farr. We've got a great show for you today. If you're getting older, and we, we hope we all are eventually, you'll want to make sure you stay tuned to the second half of our show. Celia Mason is here. Many of you know her. She's quite a dynamo. She's a certified senior advisor, and she has lots of stra strategies and, and sort of hints and ideas of what we should be doing to prepare for getting older when it comes to our finances. So she'll be really helpful on that. But first, it's my great pleasure to introduce Eric Johnson. If you've seen a live East Bay magazine, you'll have noticed the publisher is Eric Johnson, and he's here today to share with us a little bit about his magazine. Welcome to Conversations. Pleasure to be here. Thanks it's for having me. It's a fabulous looking magazine, glossy, sophisticated. It looks as though it could have been put together in New York. This Thank is great. You. And how did you get Pat Boone? Uh, well, uh, we could jump right into that uh, immediately if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, one of our uh, contributors, regular contributors and columnists, uh, Antonia Venezia, her family uh, knew Pat from some business dealings years ago. Uh -huh. So she had the opportunity to interview Pat and uh, took that opportunity. And so we had a great story on him last month. We're very excited about it. That's and great. Yeah. Well, because it's, you know, it, it's a local magazine, mm -hmm. it, but the idea is that you're recognizing that local people have an opportunity to do all sorts of things. And so why not, you know, show them what's out in the world, including Pat Boone? You have local, are these columnists that are regulars and do they live locally? Right, mm -hmm. all of our columnists are local. We have uh, about 15 uh, regular writers, uh -huh. columnists, and then we have feature writers and guest writers from time to time as right. well. Uh, we've only had, we're on our, coming up on our sixth issue of Alive right. East Bay, but uh, um, we've got a great staff of, of very talented and uh, people. Local photographers, I've seen all of this. It just yeah, looks absolutely. great. Yeah, absolutely. As an example, yeah. uh, photographers, uh, uh, one of our photographers um, who is going to become a regular uh, columnist for the magazine is, is one of the, the best in the world, Sean R. Bobby. Yes. I think he's been on our show. Been on yeah. your show before. Yeah. And uh, he will be uh, with our July issue uh, coming up in, towards the end of July, um, starting a column called Photo Guru. And Sean will be sharing tips and, and ideas on photography in the magazine. So, all right. Well, so now why did you start this? There are certainly a lot of magazines out there. Some are local. Some are, you know, not local. Sure. Why? What was the need? Well, uh, as we like to say, our magazine is uh, it, it. It's not a local magazine. It's an international magazine produced locally. We wanted to come up with, uh, uh, and I think we have. We've come up with an idea for a magazine that uh, serves a little bit broader interest. Um, you know, people in this area certainly have interests that, that are beyond uh, the East Bay Area. So although we include columns and articles about things that are happening here locally, we have uh, features about other parts of the world, Venice, Italy, for example, um, you know. Because the people here will have an opportunity perhaps to go to Venice, Italy. So you're giving them examples of what they could see. I, you brought a few of the magazines and they're just, um, they're just all so beautiful to look at. I have to say, I just, I love looking at the covers of them. But this particular article you mentioned is on Venice. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is it that people would find in this article that they might not find in a, I don't know, a travel magazine? Well, there's a bit of, again, a local connection. One of the things that I have, really endeavor to do with this magazine. I'm, I, I'm not, uh, I don't purport to be a, a writer by any means, although I've done freelance writing and I, uh, of course, write for the magazine, but uh, I've just been fortunate to have a collection of very uh, talented, knowledgeable, uh, creative and passionate people who have a vast wealth of, of, of uh, knowledge about other you know other interests and in parts of the world mm -hmm. and I just kind of stand back and let them do do what they do best so for example with the uh, the article on Venice uh, that was written by Anita Venezia who of course that's her it's namesake Italian. city yes. yes and so she you know she has roots in Venice and she did an extraordinary job with that article so I just kind of stand back and let people do what they do best, and right. that is create. And the idea is, she's a local person. She brings the international flavor, though, to her essentially her neighbors, and saying, "Let's take a look at this. You know, is this city across the pond? And take a, you know, there's just a different way of looking at things when you're coming from a local angle." Exactly right. Um, I knew that there were, you know, there are people ask me all the time, "Well, why? What do we need another magazine in the East Bay for?" There are certainly, you know, tremendous, wonderful magazines. Diablo Magazine, as an example, they've mm -hmm. been here 25 years. They're well established. 
beautiful magazine. Mm -hmm. But in looking at that magazine, I could see that there was a, there was definitely a market for something different, something broader. Um, you know, many many magazines in the area have uh, probably three, four times as many pages as we have. But what I find interesting is we probably have double or even triple the editorial content mm -hmm. in our magazine, mm -hmm. that magazines that are much, much larger. So That is a complaint people have of magazines, isn't it? That sometimes it's just ad after ad after ad, and it takes a while before you get to the editorial, and you guys are really pushing the editorial. Exactly right. Um, <clears throat> and certainly, you know, all, all magazines need advertising revenue, and we value our advertisers and, and want to put them first and foremost, but I can see that uh, to have a magazine that's really going to have a shelf life that people are going to keep in their home, you need to have that editorial content and you need to have uh, articles of interest. And again, I've just been fortunate enough to have, uh, you know, have found and come across very creative and, and talented people that can put those elements together. And uh, so. Exactly. What, what made you start a magazine? I mean, was this a lifelong dream or? Mm -hmm. And it was, it's only, was it November, I think, is when the first issue came yeah, out. Yeah, that's Is correct. that right? Uh, okay, what started it, it, that? It was not a lifelong dream. It's sort of, uh, you know, I mean, if we had you know, two hours, <laughs> I could go back and tell you. It all began. <laughs> yes, it all began. Uh, but it had a, a lot of uh, previous self-employment experience. And uh, then, as it turned out, uh, for a short time, I was working for Boy Scouts of America. And with my employment with Boy Scouts, um, doing some fundraising for scouting, I in an interview uh, that I meeting with I had with Danville Mayor Mike Shemansky, uh, he led me to um, a, a publisher of another magazine uh, in Danville, a gentleman by the name of Terry Thompson. And in my meeting with Terry Thompson, I ended up writing a scouting column for the magazine that he published. And then after you know process of, of time, uh, they decided to retire. I had gone to work for that publication as a a general manager and editor for mm -hmm. that magazine for about three years. When they decided to retire, things just came together. We thought, well, we maybe you know the employees, uh, we could come up with an idea for a, a magazine of our own, and so Alive was born. Wow. Well, well, you know, it's those are the best opportunities in the world. <laughs> yeah. They come a knocking, and you open the door, that's and right. there's a nice surprise at the end. Well, that's mm -hmm. good. Now, um, as I was uh, leafing through some of the magazines too, I mean, I, I I really did realize how much the content is quite different. You said you let your you know your experts as they are mm -hmm. to to do this on their own, but are you advising them? Geez, you know, the the people in San Ramon could sure <laughs> use a good story on such yeah. and such. I mean, how much are you sort of saying, or do it, you just it, wait till the end of the month and see what's on your desk? It's interesting. Well, on, on our regular columns, and we're fortunate to we have, uh, for example, we have Dr. Larry Anderson, who is the uh, the director of the Danville Community Band. He writes a column on music. Uh, I know virtually nothing about music, but. He's an expert and he writes well and uh, so we have him contributing every month. We have Peggy Fallon who's the author of five cookbooks and uh, she's a recipe developer and she's a wonderful writer and she contributes every month. We have um, Paul Hirsch. Paul Hirsch. Big PR who, guy in the area. See, yeah, I absolutely. Know him. Very yeah. talented writer and his interest uh, aside from his, his uh, professional writing which he does uh, on a commercial basis but he's a great sports writer. That's his field. That's what he's interested in. Mm -hmm. And uh, he approached me and said, you know, gee, I'd love to write about sports. And I, I'm not a real sports guy, but I said, Paul, I encourage you to go for it. So he contributes that column. So that's sort of, uh, and then editorially for our features, I sort of take the same approach. Um, I step back and I, I, I listen to what the contributors would like to write about. And then we decide uh, the story would would fit well and mm -hmm. so forth. So you had those big meetings that we, yeah. we see on television yeah. where people get together and decide this is yeah, going to be the, exactly the, right. the story. You had a great story in this issue, January, February issue. It was about the, this again, things you're not going to find in other magazines. Mm -hmm. This was about the Orange Festival and this was going on in Italy and you were talking about uh, during the Olympics. Who would have known? But you, you tell us about that one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, basically, one of the writers uh, uh, who worked with the magazine um, uh, knew of the Orange Festival. I'd never heard of it before, but with the uh, the Winter Olympics coming up, uh, she said, "Well, you know, there's this Orange Festival that happens in Italy, and it's been going on for you know umpteen hundreds of years. Uh, we should do a piece on that." And uh, she was passionate about that, and we said that fits perfectly. We had a 
Uh, Paul Hirsch did the article for uh, covering the Olympics, mm -hmm. and then we supplemented with the the Orange Festival and kind of you know let people hear about something that probably most people weren't even aware of. Right. So now you've had six issues. Uh, right. And and you're just going to press yeah. on the most recent. Um, We've had five actually. You've had five, six, and you're yeah. coming up on number six yeah. here. Um, how do you see this going in the future? What's the plan? Uh, well, it's going very well, and we're um, this upcoming issue is uh, we've added uh, we're, we're about uh, 30 or 40 pages more than we've had in the past. Oh. It's a special summer edition of of the uh, of the magazine, and we made a few changes in it graphically and so forth, and. That's another thing, which um, I'm not a graphic designer, but I have superb designers working with the magazine, and I kind of, again, take that hands-off approach, let them go, f you know, be creative. Uh. You're reminding me, I <laughs> saw Rudy Giuliani um, talking once, and he kept saying he wasn't good at this, couldn't do that. Yeah. He knew who to pick. Yeah, that's, I, that's the ticket, isn't it? You I, need to know who's exactly. the right person in there. I think, uh, I, I mean, I have very few talents and abilities. If I have one, it's probably identifying talent and ability in, in some other folks. Okay. Um, I have a creative director, uh, uh, Ellie Sedegatina, and, uh, and, a, and a designer, uh, Sid Stromsdorfer, who are just incredible designers, and uh, you know they do things like illustrations in the magazine, which I haven't seen in other local magazines. Hmm. Uh, but Sid will take a concept and do an illustration, and it's extraordinary what she can do. Um, some amazing, some amazing work. Oh, that's so wonderful. Now, who is who is reading the magazine, and how do people subscribe? How does that work? Uh, well, they can subscribe, of course, by calling our telephone number, and I know you'll let the viewers I'll, know about I'll that. Give them that and, one and, for or sure. our website, of course. <laughs> Um, and uh, it really appeals to you know a broad spectrum of folks. That's the other thing is I wanted to have a magazine that appealed to pretty much all age groups. Uh, as it says on the on the cover, it's uh, home, health, family, culture, and community. So um, you know we have the uh, local mayors, Mayor Wilson of San Ramon, and um, uh, Mayor Hicks of of Walnut Creek, and Karen Stepper of Danville, each writing a, a column about mm -hmm. the you know the community. So. Uh, we try to appeal to all all ages. And well, that's uh, it's wonderful. Let let us do give out some information so people can subscribe. You're also sending it though, because some people are going, "Well, I'm getting this, but I didn't subscribe." Right. So that what's going on there? Then there. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, I think uh, how most magazines start off is uh, we we certainly are we are a subscription based magazine, but uh, we started out uh, mailing fifteen thousand copies for free. To residents primarily in the Danville, Alamo, and Diablo area, but we have uh, reach into San Ramon and as far as 94598 area code in Walnut Creek. So, mm -hmm. um, and we're just you know we're growing from there. So. So, no. okay, let's let people know um, whether you're interested in advertising, right? People could call and, and if they're interested in advertising, Absolutely. subscribing, finding out more, all of that, you've got a nice uh, website, www.aliveeastbay.com, and the phone number there, we can give that out, can't we? Absolutely. 925-837-7303. Again, that's 837-7303. Eric? I wish you all the best of luck here. Thank you. I mean, not that you need it. It looks fabulous. You've got Pat Boone on the cover. This is not just any local magazine. And in fact, I'm going to use your one phrase, Alive East Bay, not a regional magazine, an international caliber magazine produced locally. Love it. All right, great. Nice to have you here, Thank Eric. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And we'll be right back with plenty more conversations. Don't go away.